Hi, I'm Jason, and in this tech tip video, we're going to talk about how a limit switch circuit and a linear actuator style setup works. Um, we sell heavy duty and super duty linear actuators, and what we're going to show you in this video is exactly how that is set up and working. Uh, but you can roll your own using various Actobotics components uh, and make your own linear drive kind of system. Um, I've gone ahead and used some linear bearings as well as a lead screw uh, in this very exposed setup to show you exactly what's going on on the inside of a linear actuator. Um, using a heavy duty premium planetary gear motor to drive it and essentially uh, the basic premise is it'll drive in one direction until it hits the limit switch and it'll stop and it'll stay there until you reverse direction and then again it'll continue all the way to the end until it hits the other limit switch and stop so what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've made some diagrams to explain exactly what's going on here and, and how that works so if you're not familiar uh, with electronic schematics and diagrams, um, I wanted to orient you on some of the symbols we'll be using here real quick on this first slide. So across the top you have various kinds of switches, and when you're looking at switches like on our website or on other sites, you'll see uh, abbreviations like SPST, DBDT. This stands for single pull, single throw, or double pull, double throw. And I've always thought of this as sort of input-output because they always do it in that order, pull and then throw. So the number of pulls is the number of uh, inputs, essentially, how many circuits coming into the switch, and then the number of throws is how many circuits can come out of each one of those pulls. So the, the number of throws is relative to the number of pulls. So in this first one, a single pull, single throw, this looks like a door or a gate or something. Um, and when this swing is closed, it'll complete that circuit, electricity will flow through. When it swings open, it's not connecting to anything else, it's simply open. Um, on the single pull double throw, you still have one input, but you now you have two outputs. So it can either uh, swing up to the top one and connect that circuit or swing down to the bottom one and connect to that circuit. And so as you move on to the double pull double throw, again, you have two inputs and two outputs for each of each of those inputs because the throw is for each of the poles. So two coming in and each of those can can go to two possible outputs. Um, in the diagrams I've made uh, for this video, I've colored the the common uh, part of the, the switch uh, black and the other two, the normally open and normally closed, with a white fill. So you can kind of tell the difference so there's no confusion. For example, if you're looking at the single pull double throw, um, you can know for sure that it's that the black one is the one that's going to be the hinge, so to speak, and this is going to be swinging back and forth connecting either the top or bottom circuit. Um, you'll often see the phrases normally open or NO, normally closed, or NC, or common on the different terminals for switches. And again, common is that, that hinge, if you will. It's always connected to that one. And in the uh, scenario where you're using switches that are uh, momentary, the, the, its normal state would be the NO, the one that's, or the normal state that it's normally connected to is NC. And then the one that's normally not connected to it is NO, normally open, because that circuit is, is open, it's not connected. Moving on, we have the symbol for batteries, for a battery, um, and the symbol for a diode. And the next screen, we're going to go ahead and look more at how diodes work. So a diode is essentially like a one-way valve for electricity. It allows the current to flow in one direction. Um, so it actually looks kind of like an arrow with a line, and the uh, the side with the line is the negative side which is called the cathode and the other side is the positive side that's called the anode and usually you don't see these these little labels when you're looking at diagrams but I wanted to to kind of familiarize you with that a little bit and so uh, the current is going to flow in the arrow direction on a diode and if current tries to flow in the opposite direction it won't let it it'll stop it um, and so since uh, electrons are negatively charged, the electrons technically flow from the negative side of the battery to the positive, but current um, is measured uh, positively, and so it's going to flow in the opposite direction of the uh, electrons. 
Um, and so the current is going to flow from positive to negative. So you can see in the left hand circuit, the motor is rotating because the current is flowing in the correct direction. It's that diode is letting it go through. But if in the right circuit here, I've turned the battery around uh, to reverse polarity and you can see the current won't get any farther than that diode. It'll prevent it from flowing back uh, in the reverse direction. So let's go ahead and take a look at a double pull, double throw switch and how we can use it to reverse polarity. Um, you can see in this diagram that the current is coming out of the positive side of the battery and through this double pull, double throw switch, through the motor and back through. You have a complete uh, circuit. If we wanted to reverse the direction of the motor, we would need to change which terminal in the motor is receiving positive and which is receiving negative, assuming that it's a DC motor, a brushed DC motor. And so if we simply put little jumper wires connecting uh, the top left and bottom right uh, contact points on the top and bottom circuits on this double pull double throw switch, um, it provides us a path to, to reverse the direction. So if you connect the normally open, if you will, um, to, on one circuit to the normally closed on the other and vice versa, when you throw the switch, it gives that current um, a path to flow through um, and you'll end up reversing the direction to that motor. So as you toggle back and forth with your toggle switch, um, you're reversing the direction of the current and therefore reversing the direction of the motor. So let's take a look at that, putting it all together. Um, we have our two diodes connected across the terminals of our limit switches. Um, on the limit switches we saw in servicecity.com, you have a common, a normally open, and a normally closed terminal. Um, and we're using the normally closed because for the most part, you want uh, these switches to be closed until you get to the end of your stroke and it makes contact with that switch and will actually open the switch. So as I went through and made these diagrams, um, I considered the different states that this whole circuit can be in and I decided that ultimately there are six different states. In state one, you're, you're traveling happily along towards the, the end of your stroke and the motor is spinning in one particular direction and the current is coming out of the positive end of the battery, flowing through our switch and then it's going to take the path of least resistance like most most things in nature and it's going to uh, uh, I would presume have the least amount of resistance going through that switch rather than through the diode even if the diode allows it to flow in that direction but either way it's getting through and the circuit is complete then you get to the end of your stroke and you have physically depressed one of these limit switches opening uh, the switch that was normally closed and so you've stopped your motor from running um, and so you can see here, there really isn't any current flowing, but just to illustrate how far it could get, if it tried, it would uh, get up uh, to this diode here, and it would be flowing. It can't flow against that diode. That diode is pointing in the opposite direction that the current is going in, so it can't get through there, and it can't get through up here because the switch is open. So to get our system moving again, we can throw our switch, and that will reverse the direction of the current, and it is only in this state, the state three here, for just a second, just a, you know, maybe milliseconds. Um, because in this state, the diode here on the first limit switch will allow current to flow in the opposite direction because we've reversed the polarity. And so it's flowing through the closed switch up here. This switch is still physically depressed and it's open, but it'll flow through this diode down here. So the diodes are the key to making this system work. And so now your motor will begin to uh, travel in the opposite direction and it won't be doing that for very long before that switch goes back because it's released, it's uh, far enough away now that it's not uh, depressing that switch. And so now you're traveling happily along in the opposite direction that you originally started in. And so similarly, this will continue until you reach the end. It'll open the other limit switch. It'll stop the motor from running because it's open to this switch and this diode is preventing current in, in the direction that would allow it to rotate. And so again, we need to throw our switch, our double pull, double throw switch to reverse the polarity of the current. And in this, now this diode will allow the current to flow in that direction. And again, that'll get us right back to where we started. Uh, where you're traveling happily along in that original direction. So that is the basics of how a 
circuit like this works. I hope you found this information useful. Um, as always, if you have questions, uh, just send them to tech at servocity.com. Mm -hmm.